Hey guys, welcome back to 88-Bit Tech. I'm AJ and today we are reviewing an M.2 enclosure that I bought off of AliExpress for $12.22, including taxes and delivery USD. The enclosure we're reviewing today is this one here. It's an M.2 enclosure. It's not branded or anything, but it's one of the most sold M.2 enclosures on AliExpress. It's only rated for 10 gigabits per second. So that is a thousand megabytes per second. So you're gonna need an, an input that is capable of taking on that much data. So I will be plugging this into my laptop behind me here into the Thunderbolt 3 port to get that maximum speed. I'm just gonna show you this. So that's the drive there. It does come with an aluminum shell to dis dissipate heat. And let's take a look on the inside. Inside we have the actual M.2 slots. This did come with a, a rubber grommet, so it is a tool-less, uh, it is a tool-less construction here. And it also they also they also provided USB-C to USB-C that is also rated for supposedly rated for 10 gigabits per second. So hopefully that we get that when we run this test. The drive that we are testing in this M.2 enclosure is this one here. It's the, also got it from off of AliExpress. It's the M.2 NVMe SSD one terabyte from Kingspec. This is a Gen 3 by 4 drive, so it's going to easily be able to hit that thousand megabytes. Uh, I actually got this off of AliExpress also for $39. Oh, this is a one terabyte, $39. So really good deal. I'm going to review this one later on separately just by itself because I do want to talk a little bit more about uh, the reliability of getting in your storage options off of AliExpress because there's a lot to go into this one here. But anyway, uh, let's get into the test. Okay, guys, so let's go over the installation of the SSD into the M.2 SSD enclosure here. So it is a toolless M.2, so you don't need any screwdrivers or anything. So go ahead and push that tab to pull the uh, M.2 slot out. So you have that and set that aside. So it comes with two of these little rubber grommets. Um, you're gonna want to install this first prior to putting in the drive. So how it works is you just have to find that hole there. Just slot that in there first. Just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and take your SSD. So you can see. M.2 King Spec. It's the NX series, one terabyte PCIe Gen 3 by 4. Gonna want to insert this. It, it can only go in one way. See, there's a little notch here on the on the SSD. So just match that notch up to the slot here. You're gonna want to go in at about a 30 degree angle. And it should just, yep, slot in like that. Then, next thing you're going to want to do is put this down and just pull the tab over. Until it's over, it's perfect. There you go. And just like that, you've got that installed. Now, the reason why you want to make sure that you have it, um, the grommet installed first is because I don't know if you can see this, but the grommet has a couple different layers, and you want it to be at the uh, the top layer. That's where the, you want the drive to be resting, so it's at the highest point. The reason for this is this. Fortunately, this SSD comes with a thermal pad on top, so that helps dissipate the heat. But at the same time. This also gives uh, it enough um, contact with the aluminum shell. So as you can see, when I put this back in here, it's pretty much, that thermal pad is pretty much topping, uh, touching the top of the aluminum shell. 
and you want this so that way you can have maximum heat dissipation to reduce uh, wear and tear on the drive over time. And there you go, and you're set. So now you just got to plug in the USB-C into a corresponding port on your device that can that can handle up to a thousand megabytes uh, per second read and write speeds, which I'm going to be using a Thunderbolt 3 port that can go all the way up to 40, so we should be golden. Let's go ahead and test it out. Just so you guys can see, it is plugged in. It does have a, a light here to, to signify that it is being uh, powered. It's quite cool to the touch right now since obviously nothing's happened. We'll see how warm this gets over time. So we have this uh, Crystal Dismark set up for NVMe SSD. Uh, profile is set to default read and write. Got some files in there because I already have this installed on my other computer and I just took it out to do this test. And as you can see, we have this set up for five passes of 32 gigabytes. To really stress this drive out, I, I want to give it a good run. So we're going to get go ahead and run this test and see what the speeds come out to on this drive. And we'll come back when it finishes. Okay guys, we're back and we finished the test here. Uh, the drive is quite warm, but it's no, nowhere near a thermal throttle. It's rated up to go up to like 70. This SSD is rated to go uh, all the way past 70 degrees C, and it's not even close to that. It's warm, but it's definitely dissipating through the aluminum, so that's what we want. Now, as far as the test goes, we've got some excellent results here. So we ran five passes at 32 gigabytes. And that first line here indicates our the theoretical yield. So this is this is what your uh, what the M.2 drive can do. If everything is in, in perfect conditions, it should be able to do these speeds, which is excellent because it's actually rated. Um, we're actually getting higher than a thousand megabytes read and write. Um, but it, once again, it's a theoretical, so it's not a real world. Um, example uh, where it's really impressive especially considering this is a $12.22 m.2 external SSD enclosure is the second line so the second line here actually indicates a more real-world value and we're getting 885 on the read with 907 on the right so close to 900 or basically 900 on, on those values which is absolutely amazing so with this drive for $12.22 I definitely can recommend it the key thing to take into account if you do decide to get this drive is that you use a cable that is rated to be able to transfer and write speeds up to a thousand megabytes per second and you also need to make sure that your input that you're using is also rated for that so you'll need for 1000 megabits per second, you need at least a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port on your device or you can or higher. Um, that includes Thunderbolt 3. So if, if you're using Thunderbolt 3, that'll work as well. But 3.2 uh, Gen 1 will not support 1000 megabits per second. So keep that in mind. And that's it for now. So I'll see you guys in the next video.